Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 28 part B. We are still in section 8.1 and last time we talked about how to estimate mu when sigma is known. We're going to continue with that uh, section and I hope you enjoy this pre-recorded video. So that's how we find a critical value. This is really important so I hope you'll review that um, and make sure that you understand it. So again, this procedure is when we know sigma, the population, population standard deviation. Or, of course, if I know sigma squared, then I also know sigma. Just take the square root. So your book has this formula. It's also listed on the formula sheet. And it says x bar minus e and then x bar plus e. So mu is between... Uh, x bar minus e and x bar plus e, okay? And if you recall, what this means is that if we have some distribution of x with mean mu, and um, this is actually going to be the distribution of x bar, then uh, we're going to find two values uh, here. This will be x bar minus e, this will be x bar plus e, such that the area between them is c. All right, that's what we want to know. And the values we are looking for are these two values. Now the book is making this a little simpler by, or trying to make this uh, a little simpler so that we don't have the big formula that I showed you last time. And so they've said e, e, is the estimate of our margin of error, and it is the critical value, z sub c, times sigma divided by the square root of n. Now here's a real important, easy way to know which formula to use for a confidence interval for the mean. If we have sigma somewhere in the problem, then we use the formula of e that has sigma in it. If we have s, uh, in which is the sample standard deviation in the problem, then we have to use a different formula. We have to use the formula that has S in it. So we have sigma, so we're going to use this formula for sigma. And um, you can read these two expressions here are exactly the same. It's whichever you want to do, but it's z sub c times sigma divided by square root of n, or you can say z sub c times sigma divided by the square root of n. It gives you the same number, whichever way you look at it. Last time, I gave you the whole formula like this. If you want to use it, the confidence interval like this, instead of using e, you just want to plug it in directly, you can do that. It's just fine. The other way I showed last week was the in the interval notation. So I have x bar, again, minus this quantity that that we are expressing as e, which is z sub c times sigma over square root of n. And then the upper number is x bar plus that same quantity. Okay. Again, there's another way to write this, x bar plus or minus e, which could also be written as x bar plus or minus z sub c sigma over square root of n. These are all equivalent. Okay. They're all correct. They're all equivalent. It's just different ways of writing it. So now let's get to an example so that we can put this all together again and hopefully it will make um, become clearer to you. So this problem says, in recent decades, it appears that the weights of men have increased. And I believe the problem says dramatically. <laughs> so we need to update our mean estimate for men's weight so that boats and elevators and aircraft do not become dangerously overloaded. If you've ever been on an elevator, it will say maximum capacity. That is based on the weights, the mean weight or average weight of men. Uh, on average, men weigh more than women. So we, again, that's on average. So we use the most severe estimate of weight for a person, and that's the average man's weight. Okay? All right. And that's for safety reason. So um, we take a simple random sample. So that requirement's met. Of size n, this means 
when it says size n or how many, this is n is equal to 40. If we don't come out and say n is equal to 40, this is how you figure it out. So we take a simple random sample of size 40 men, or a size of 40, which is uh, 40 men, and we obtain a mean weight of these men, which is 172.55. Now, in the same sentence as sample, we have mean weight. So I didn't tell you this time. I will usually tell you, but if I didn't, you should be able to figure out by the sentence that it's talking about the sample, so that's X bar, 172.55, okay? Um, now, it says research from other studies suggests that the population standard deviation of men's weights is 26 pounds. So here in the problem, we've given you sigma, so we're going to use the formula from the formula sheet that has sigma in it. All right. First thing we want to do is find the best point estimate for the mean weight of men. This is a very easy question to get right on the test. Okay. So the best point estimate for the mean weight, last time we talked about that, that's X bar. X bar is equal to 172.55 pounds. I am looking for both the symbol and the quantity. Okay, for this question. The units, well, units are nice, but I'm really um, more interested in the number. Okay, The units will change from problem to problem. I just want to make sure you know that the best point estimate is X bar and what its value is. Okay, so now I have, I go to the formula sheet, but you'll see on your formula sheet, there's this one formula under means for chapter 8, but there's two formulas for E, and I'll have to change those. Right now it says t Z alpha over 2, T alpha over 2, um, N minus 1, S over square root of N. So you have to decide which formula to use. Since we have sigma in our question, we're going to use the formula. We're not going to use this formula. I'll rewrite that. So where the formula sheet says z of alpha over 2, that's going to be our z sub c. So again, I will correct that on the formula sheet to try to make it less confusing. So x bar we found out was 172.55, sigma is 26, and n is 40. Well, that's the end of this video, so please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the day on the course calendar. Uh, if you have questions, by all means, please come to virtual office hours. I am happy to help you. And if you can't do that, then, then by all means, email me. But when you email me, please email me a picture of both the problem, because I may not have access to that problem wherever I am, and a picture of your work, which allows me to know uh, how you're approaching the problem and help you best and the quickest. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Until then, stay safe and take care.